We say, folks, Tactard Ted, it is Thursday, the 25th of August. How are you doing today? I am doing excellent. Well, it occurred to me this morning that the United States is becoming a Soviet joke. And let me explain to you what I mean by this. There is an old joke from the Soviet days that was told amongst the Soviet people about their news, their print news. Uh, the two major sources of print news was one called Pravda, which Pravda translated means truth. And the other was Izvestia. Izvestia means news. So one's called news and one's called truth. The Soviet joke goes, there is no Pravda in Izvestia. In Pravda, there is no Investia. In other words, in truth, there's no news. In news, there's no truth. And that was honestly where we are right now. That's where the Soviet propaganda machine was. And that's where we are. 110%. And you can look at the way we frame things. Um, and, I mean, there's no better two descriptions of where we are when it comes to news and honesty than the COVID pandemic. By the way, full disclosure, I'm not quadruply vaxxed, and I have never been diagnosed with COVID-19 or any of the COVID variants. I should be dead because don't you remember we were all going to die and if you don't get the jab, you are going to get COVID. Well, guess what, folks? I know a lot of folks who've been jabbed and boosted and all that happiness who have had COVID. We have a president who has been boosted and jabbed, has had COVID. We have a first lady who's been boosted, jabbed, has COVID twice. Um... So, folks, we understand that there was a lot of lying going on, a lot of misinformation, and the great thing about it is if you say anything about it or said anything about it up until now, they went out to ruin you. You were spreading disinformation. You had fact checkers. Why? Because anything that doesn't fit the narrative must be destroyed. And we got the same thing going on with uh, Ukraine. Um, it's interesting. I'll give you several examples. Um, in the United States, we simply can't post news stories with an even hand. Everything has to be spun. A great example is the recent terrorist attack that killed a 30-year-old Russian journalist in Moscow. Uh, they blew her up in a vehicle by accident from every, from a lot of things, although it started to come out that she may have been the target just to uh, put the hurt on her father, who is a high profile Russian philosopher um, and Russian nationalist to, to a large degree. Um, especially if you look at some of his work 20 years ago when he was a bitter former communist who hated everything about communists and smelled quite a bit. Um, the terrorist attack is reported in such a way that our media really makes it sound like this 30-year-old girl deserved to get blowed up in a terrorist attack. And we're not calling it a terrorist attack. It's a terrorist attack. Uh, car bombs, that's, that's one of the tools terrorists use, folks. Um... And somehow, we are now supportive of terrorism. Uh, this isn't the first time this has happened. There was a uh, guy, I believe, in either Kursan region or Odessa, I can't remember, early on, um, killed in his car. Lots of pictures exist by the killers um, because they didn't like what he was saying. You know, freedom of speech, we, we kind of appreciate that in this country. Apparently, the Ukrainians don't like freedom of speech. This girl's never shouldered a rifle against Ukraine. Uh, 
her father has probably said a lot of harsh words about Ukraine in the context of the war and how they've treated ethnic Russians. But somehow she deserved this. And this is the way our news is putting, reporting it. They are not giving her the benefit of being a victim of terrorism. She is a victim of terrorism. They did not, this blogger, when this story came out months ago, they did not give him um, the benefit of being a victim of murder. And this is a lot of how our news is reported. Um, it's sad. It honestly is sad, folks. We can't smell ourselves. And our press is ridiculous. And it's not like we have reporters anymore who actually go out into the field and do reporting or investigation. Um, that used to be 60 minutes way back in the day, you know, late 70s, early 80s. 60 minutes, yeah, I know I'm geezing. I'm an old nostalgic dude here. Um, the problem with 60 minutes is it's no longer what it was. They used to go out and investigate. They would ask tough questions. They would ask difficult questions. And a lot of times they would report things that were not... common ideas. They would report things that flew in the face of the common narrative of the government. Not anymore, folks. Nope. We got CBS uh, shit can and pulled a program that was going to expose uh, the problem with the uh, weapons going down the hole, the black hole, and not making it to the front line, lines in uh, Ukraine. And that was pulled. It was pulled because it did not fit a political narrative. These guys in the media are working hand in hand with the government. No less than the people at Pravda or Zvestia worked with the Soviet government. They're fellow travelers. They all believe the same shit. And they're only going to tell you what they want you to know. And that's where we are on news. And I've just kind of, you know, I wanted to put this out at 10 minute mark or less because this is part and parcel of everything that's going on. Um, we don't allow people to decide for themselves. Everything has to be carefully crafted. Um, in free thinking, it's funny. The free thinkers are now people who tend to be more conservative. They're not the radical leftists. The radical leftists are bootlicks right now. They're going to look at Joe Biden's boots. And they are going to go right along with everything. And it, it's sad. It really is. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of people who uh, aren't on with all this. We also talk about terrorism. Uh, there are death lists out there. They have an enemies list, Ukraines do. And uh, Roger Waters from Pink Floyd... He's on that list. Uh, Jackson Hinkle, uh, The Dive, he's on that list. Brian Vitellick of The New Atlas, he's on that list. Mark Salota, he is on that list. Um, who else is on that list? Um, oh, Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> yeah, Tulsi Gabbard's on that list. Um, anybody who doesn't fit their narrative, the, the Ukrainians don't appreciate free speech. You know, they would just soon kill you for expressing something they don't like. Um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, man, uh, if somebody says something you don't like, you don't gotta listen. And you don't have the right to tell somebody to shut up. And that's one of the cornerstones of this country. That's one of the cornerstones of who we are, freedom of speech. And we're getting away from that. Um, we're now reporting in the news, which once again, I tell you, the news is, is not honest. It's not impartial. We get told in the news that if you go out and you protest the government, somehow you're an insurrection. Somehow you're destroying the government. You're fighting. You're damaging our democracy. Yet if you go out and you burn down a city in protest and you kill people, which a lot more people died in the BLM riots than the January 6th protest, um, Somehow, those are peaceful protests for the BLM where they burnt down cities and killed people. But January 6th, where a few windows got broke and an unarmed woman was killed by a Capitol Police officer who's never been called to account. 
Um, somehow that is a terrible, terrible day that, and, and literally the Democrats go playing that this, it's worse than 9-11 and uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor combined. No, come on guys, fuck you. Get, get a grip. Get a fucking grip, dude. That is not the case. And uh, so that's my thoughts on the news. Take it for what it's worth. Bye.